All right. Well, welcome to the Speed Traveler Road Show. I'm Chris Everson. That's Charlie Frank, and you're listening to us live on KHTS AM 1220 FM 98.1. Of course, Charlie, we're available wherever you download your favorite podcast. And check us out on social media at the Speed Traveler is our tagline, if you were, monogram, if you will. And uh, Charlie, got a great show here today in we the do. studio. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar with the Speed Traveler Road Show, uh, Chris and I, I've been involved with automobiles our entire life. We went to the Long Beach Grand Prix when we were five years old and and uh, have never stopped going to car races since then, <laughs> have we? Yeah. I actually think we even started earlier, about three years old at Riverside Raceway. Yeah, it really four, did. But... And, you know, and you said we've been involved with cars our whole life. And, you know, and I've never really talked about this. Right. But... But I was born on uh, in July, and I was the, one of the first babies born on that day. Right. But uh, to the whole being involved with the cars your whole life, I right. was half born in my parents' Rambler station wagon. Oh no way! On the way to the <laughs> hospital. That's, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I, was, I was just thinking about that when you said that. I was like, you know, my which mom, hospital? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was Saint, was it St. John's? Oh yeah, St. John's. Yeah, I think Santa it was St. John's yeah. in Santa Monica. Yeah. That's crazy. So. Uh, so yeah, so we uh, we talk race car driving. Uh, we talk Formula One, which is really hot right now around the world. One of the most uh, probably the hottest property uh, sports property in the world right now is Formula One. Uh, and we talk about buying and selling cars. Chris and I have bought and sold hundreds of cars, and uh, you know we've lost on some, we we've done okay on some, and we've won on some. So we try and share that knowledge. If you're out there looking for a classic or exotic car. Uh, we got some tips that we're going to talk about in uh, segment B on that. Nice. And, you know, just recently, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Formula One a little bit later on, like yep. you mentioned, and uh, and 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 the Long Beach Grand Prix, yep. you know, but just this past week, uh, we did a live show um, at Moto Ren. Uh, they're, they're starting a cars and coffee event there in, uh, in the near, in near LAX airport. Right. And what a great showroom. What great people. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really want to talk about that a little bit. I know it's not really on our agenda. Right. But I mean, Letta was just so gracious. And yeah. Austin, you know, they opened up the doors to us. Yeah. And and they introduced us to a whole new group of people. And what's interesting, it was a, a, a wet, rainy day. It was. <laughs> and I was still impressed with how many people. And when I say wet and rainy, I mean, that was a torrential was downpour. Boring, yeah. It was a downpour. <laughs> I mean, cars were spinning off the highway left they were, and right. We saw three cars spun out on the on the drive you know, down there. And uh, But it was such a great you know group of people that showed up. I yeah. mean, people were very dedicated to it. And, right. and I'm really excited that Moto Ren's going to be doing their cars and coffee, yeah. I guess, by bi weekly or bi monthly? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. <laughs> we'll ask. You know, you can go to motoren.com, M O T O R E N N.com, yeah. and they'll have oh, everything no. there. That's also their Instagram account, uh, Appersand. And what I like about uh, Moto Ren, and they're not paying us to say this, is that you they not only sell cars and they do what Austin was saying is a white glove experience where you can just be in Scottsdale, Arizona, and order a car and it'll show up a few days later in a truck. Um, but what's cool is they also offer service on the cars uh, and they offer consignment. So, you know, if you've got a car, you could you could store it there. And they'll take care of it. So it's it's interesting business. And we must say, when we say car, we're talking very high end yeah, cars. That's I true. mean, there's it's Lamborghini, it's yeah. Bentley. There's it's no Ferrari. two cells there. <laughs> no, 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 no. What what? What's no wrong? Toyota Tercels. <laughs> Come on, what's wrong with the nineteen eighty three Toyota Tercel? As a matter of fact, honestly, I would kill for a Toyota Tercel. I right know, now. I know. <laughs> I agree. What was the great Toyota that they made in the eighties? It was the Twin cam, uh, the uh, oh, Corolla. The Corolla. Yeah, yeah. they first so the mid-80s yeah, yeah. Corolla, and it had like the 16-valve, right? Yeah. Twin cam. That yeah. was like the hot motor. I, I think it only made like 128 horsepower. Yeah, but that was the hot, hot hatch motor. But it was better motor. than 90 horsepower. Yeah, exactly, which everything else was at the time. So. Yeah. But, I mean, it was really fun because we shot our, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about F1 um, just a very brief segment on the upcoming Chinese Grand Prix yep. this weekend. Uh, and we we did our F1 deep dive show. Right. And Austin was actually a guest on the show. And I, I was really impressed with how much he knew. Yeah. You know, did. it was. Well, what's interesting is he uh, uh, we're talking about the uh, co-owner of uh, Motor Ren um, and also. 
Austin Haldeman. Haldeman, yeah. <laughs> Austin Haldeman. Thank you for and uh, uh, but but he's been involved. Uh, I uh, he said he worked for Edmonds and he also worked for Honda Performance Development. That's right. Which makes they don't make the Formula One engine, but they make all the other engines, the Le Mans engines right. and the prototype sports engines, car, yeah, sport car engines, prototypes. So you know he, I, I would make it makes sense to me that he definitely uh, knew knew his stuff about yeah. F one. So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it was a it was a fun trip. We we had an interesting meal afterwards, didn't we? <laughs> well, you know, I, I would say the meal that that uh, that Moto Ren provided, which was Randy's donuts. Oh, that was, was by far yeah. superior than anything else we ate yeah. afterwards. We, we the place can remain nameless, I yeah. guess. They 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 probably deserve to be called out a little bit. For you know, <laughs> I'll take the hit on that one. Right. <laughs> and I, and I loved this place as a kid. I remember going. I remember fond memories of going there with my dad and yeah. getting big German pancakes or or which are nice big pan filled pancakes or the Swedish pancakes which is like a thick crepe but ba Dinah's down by the airport <laughs> is an absolute dump <laughs> do not eat at Dinah's yeah. I mean it was Awful. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've had a really bad meal. It could not uh, have been any worse. Yeah, the the service was bad. Everything came out at different times. Um, I didn't get my uh, egg whites that I they paid. Were, they ran extra, out of egg whites. Yeah, that I you, paid they an brought extra you an omelet, but I ran out of egg paid whites. An extra four dollars for it to <laughs> for them to not get it right. You didn't get your your meal came in three segments. Yeah, <laughs> timed about five minutes apart. Yeah, one egg at a time, one piece of French toast at a time. It was, yeah, yeah, and, it wasn't uh, that bad, but yeah. it was it was and it, it, yeah, it just it was pretty. It, bad. it was a a big letdown. I was really excited about uh, eating there. I think we need to change the sign here from Roadshow to the Speed Traveler Food Critic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But okay, but with that said, and I mean we're getting a little uh, off target. On the food thing, I just want to express <coughs> again though that Randy's donuts were incredible. <laughs> Randy's were amazing, and Randy's has a cars and coffee. Yes. I, I can't remember. I think it's like the second Saturday of every month in Burbank by the Randy's Donuts. Well, but, where uh, can we find where all the cars and coffees are happening around oh, the country? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that, at carsandcoffeeevents.com. Yeah. Uh, and our buddy who's the owner of it, he uh, he assembled this amazing list of cars and coffee. And uh, so if you're in, you know, if you're listening to us on podcast and and you're not in a big city, you can still find a cars and coffee. Just go to carsandcoffeeevents.com. Yeah, nationwide listing of great cars and coffee events. As a matter of fact, the Moto Ren event is now on their site yeah. um, as they develop that event. So, yeah. yeah. But getting back to the food for one quick uh, <laughs> follow up. So, yeah, we we had a, a very poor uh, breakfast at Dinah's, but the night before, we went to La Scala in Beverly Hills. And for those of you who don't know that restaurant, oh. it is an old school. It's been open, what, 60, 60 years or so? 60 plus years now, yeah. Uh, a lot of people in there look like they were there the first when day it, it opened. With the day open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but everyone was so happy. They were. You know, yeah. all the patrons that are there, everyone was super, super happy. Yeah. And, 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 you know. the, and the chef, Jason, who's a car guy, who's got a uh, Jeep. He came up with this uh, amazing dish, which you loved. Oh it was a ravioli, right? Yeah, it was a it was a chicken and a mascarpone stuffed ravioli. Right. But it had a smoked cheese in there right. as well. Yeah. And Oh my God, that was absolutely incredible. <laughs> Amazing, it was yeah. so good. Yeah, it was so, so, it, so good. I, it, and here again, we're not getting paid to say this, but if you happen to be in the Beverly Hills area, go into a La Scala restaurant. It's on Cannon Drive. Uh, go to the bar and ask for Junior or the chef, Jason, or uh, Matt. <laughs> yeah, or Matt. Yep. <laughs> Crazy Matt. Crazy. And uh, you guys will have a great time. Tell them the Speed Traveler sent you. Yeah, and it's definitely old school Beverly Hills, L.A., West L.A. It is. Uh, eatery. It's, yeah. you know, the big plush leather seats, red leather yeah. seats. You know, it's 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 classic. It's refined and it's clean. It is a great, yeah, such a great, you know, great restaurant. And the people, everyone there, is, it's just awesome. So. Yeah. But uh, all right. So what's this show about, Charlie? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, what, what do we normally talk about? Well, in today, you would think it's a food review, but today <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, our featured mark is the Acura. And that's in honor of the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach, which the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach is our favorite 
motorsports event of the year. And you've been to lots of Formula One races. I've been to Formula One races. We've been to Monaco, Spa, uh, Le Mans. Le Mans yeah. And uh, Long Beach, uh, the Acura Grand Prix at Long Beach is right up there at the top always. It, it, for me, it's right up there. And the biggest, one of the biggest reasons for, for me that it's at the top of the list is that the plethora of events that take place at the Long Beach Grand Prix around the IndyCar race, which is right. the marquee event, yeah. and the accessibility that fans have to get into everything at that event. So yeah. that's that's why I love the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach, and that's why Acura is our marquee yeah. car of the day. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break in a minute here, but we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about uh, what Acuras you can buy now that are probably gonna double in value. Uh, and then we're going to come back and talk uh, Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach in our segment after that. So uh, please join us. And uh, this is Charlie and Chris from the Speed Traveler Roadshow. We'll be right back. All right. Well, welcome back to the Speed Traveler Roadshow. You're listening to Chris and Charlie here on KHTS AM 1220 FM 98.1. And of course, wherever you download your favorite podcast. Also, check us out on all the social medias and YouTube at The Speed Traveler. And Charlie, uh, coming up in what's coming up in our next segment here? All right. In our next segment, uh, in honor of the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach, which is coming up this weekend, our featured mark of the day, Chris, is the Acura. Yeah. All right. And uh, particularly the Acura NSX. It's it's really hard to not love the Acura NSX. I mean, the, the you know the Integra Type Two uh, is Type R. A, type yeah. R, excuse me, is an amazing car, but. Really, the anchor tenant here at Acura is the NSX. Yeah, I agree. It was uh, Acura and Honda's first, essentially their first supercar. Yeah. Uh, and it, it is a beautiful car. If you haven't seen it, we'll put a picture up on, uh, you know, on YouTube and also on uh, uh, on the KHTS radio station. But uh, yeah, the, the NSX, they, they made, uh, there's basically been two iterations of it. There was the first one that model years were 1991 to 2005. Uh, and, and then they came back later in uh, 2017 and did an updated one. And that ran for about six years. Uh, the, uh, the original ones, the 1991, 2005s, it's, I won't say you, we've missed the boat on buying those, but man, you could buy them for 50 grand three years ago. Uh, and now the cheapest one I could find was 70 and it wasn't that great of one. So it's just amazing how that car has really caught on. It's going up in value. And, you know, and I, I think Acura did a really smart thing and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there was a, a Senna edition of the Acura NSX. Yeah. And I think that car was the first time that they took a Formula One world champion right. and branded the uh, their marquee uh, right. performance car supercar to, to a driver to a driver i think I, 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 yeah i know lotus did the uh john player special yeah uh, they did the john player edition of the lotus but that was Esprit. the team and yeah. the sponsor yeah that was it not the driver it wasn't, it wasn't mario, Clay, andretti, Ma mario yeah. andretti it wasn't uh it wasn't emerson fittipaldi yeah um but which, uh, by the way you know i digress that 1973 uh, Lotus John Player Special Lotus that um, uh, Emerson Seven. Fittipaldi oh, 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 yeah. won the oh, world yeah. championship in was yeah. probably one of the prettiest Formula One cars of all time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but not that that has anything to do with Acura. <laughs> no, no, no. But it, it, has, it has something to do with uh, Long Beach Grand Prix. Yes, which we're going to talk about in our next segment. But getting back to the NSX, so they made a little less than nine thousand of these cars between 1991 and 2005. Um, and uh, around the world, they made a, a, almost double that number. So about 16,000 worldwide, but 9,000 here in the States. So there's quite a few of those around. But it's uh, not a lot. No, it's not a lot. It's still, and, and there's quite a few of them around. The first one had the three liter uh, V6 VTEC, which put out 270 horsepower. But what I think is great about the Acura NSX is at the end of the day, it's a Honda. <laughs> yeah. Like when you get it fixed, it's not like you're taking it to the Ferrari dealer and you're going to get, 
you know, you hit could up for a twenty five thousand dollar bill. Yeah, to your point, you could literally take that NSX to any Honda or Acura dealer right. and have it serviced. Right. It's yeah. not outside their purview. And it's right. it's a rather simple Yeah, it's a car. Honda. It's a Honda. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, I mean, shoot, we love our Honda S two K that yeah. we put on the track. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, it's a fun car to the S two K is a super fun car to drive. I'm surprised yeah. we're not gonna talk a little bit about the S two K. Oh no, we but, should talk you about know, the S two K. But yeah. I mean because the the NSX is is the top dog in the in the Acura right. lineup, yep. um, and I guess we are talking about Acura, so yeah. I mean it makes yeah, sense yeah. That we're not talking about the Honda S two K. But to your point, I mean it, at the end of the day, that Acura is a Honda, yeah. and it's super reliable. Right, exactly. And you as a driver have to really work hard to destroy it and yeah. show just absolute negligence yeah. to beat one of those into the ground. Yeah, they handle well and they're they're fast. Quick, I'd say not fast, but they're quick. They're quick. Uh, 270 horsepower. And they they upgraded, if you're looking for a little newer, a little more rare version, in 97, they switched to a 3.2 liter, and they went up to 290 horsepower. And uh, those there's less of those cars. The bulk of the NSXs were made in the early 90s. So by the time they got to 97, they really started slowing down on the numbers that we're producing. And there was years where there was only a couple hundred made, two or three hundred. Wow. So those would really be the ones you want to identify is the higher horsepower. And, and that the uh, it's the 3.2 liter engine. Also, it's referred to as the NA2. Oh, OK. Yeah. NA2 versus the NA1. OK. So those are ones you really want to look at. So it's the same engine block, though, effectively. And I don't just know. Boot- I, okay. I, it's a, I know the first was a three liter and the next was a 3.2. 3.2 liter, so which I'm is not just sure basically the volume. Yeah, out yeah. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. So look for those. The the NA2 versions, 97 plus, they're not really that much more. They're a little more expensive. The the least expensive one we saw today was about 80. Right. Um, and it's still like really really good nick i agree i mean i agree yeah you, you can know. get a good one for eighty five thousand. yeah yeah for sure so i i highly recommend that it's just gonna go up and up and up i mean unfortunately you did miss we all miss we all miss <laughs> yeah you know these were 45 fifty thousand dollar cars five years yeah. ago and, yeah and uh, they've really gone up almost doubled you know in in five short years it's interesting how that seems i mean that era of car that's what we're going to see happen period yeah but it's also interesting how covid the covid generation had an effect it on did, the right? used car market yeah everything went up yeah because people were sitting at home bored bored yeah. and just people were you know what were you doing oh shopping online what'd <laughs> yeah. you buy i bought a car yeah. i bought eight cars yeah i know exactly <laughs> for those who could afford it we'd go buy all the cars but uh yeah so and to- and you know also to the to the to the nsx you know we always we're always big fans of the very analog car and when right. i speak to the analog part of the car one of the biggest things that you can be analog with your car is the manual transmission Agreed. versus the electronic oh, that's paddle shifting point. um so and that know. and they're worth more though if you can find a 97 and newer uh nsx with a manual that's the way to go because yeah. they were in much less numbers they have more power uh and so those are those are going to go up more than than the rest of them um just one last footnote on the acura nsx the first generation is they Updated the body a little bit in 2002, and they took out the pop-up headlights, and they did a flush. That's right. Uh, uh, they did a flush hood with the headlights uh, going recessed through. Recessed in there. Yeah, yeah, recessed in there. They wa- they must have watched Corvette Summer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we always talk about it. Cor- I, I don't know if I've ever seen it. but What? It, it, yeah, I, I remember. Uh, I saw it, but I was really disappointed because uh, it's starring Mark Hamill. Uh, and, from and, Star Wars, yeah. and it was right after his big fame in Star right, Wars. Right, and I was like, "Oh, it's going to be about racing." And I don't remember the movie, but it wasn't about racing, was it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here's what I remember, and tell me if I'm wrong. He was a high school student, and his in his uh, uh, auto shop class, they built this Corvette. Right. And they tricked it out of Mansley bodywork. Blah blah blah. Right. Um, it either got stolen or they sold it. Right. And he wanted the car. He was in love with the car. Mark Hamill's character. I cannot remember the name. Right. And he chased it to Las Vegas where he met stripper, stripper uh, slash dancer. 
Annie Potts. Oh my God, I, I can't believe I'm pulling that out of wow, the Wow, that's impressive. And they went on an adventure to try to find this car, which at the end of the day was kind of a lump. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the sad thing. That's the stuff that sticks in my oh brain. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> But who is the 12th president of the United States? I have no, no idea. idea. <laughs> Corvette summer. <laughs> but uh, back to the Acura NSX. So. <laughs> What, what what's interesting is it, the car went away in 2005 and then it took about 12 years and then they relaunched it. And, and this time it had a, a 3.5 liter twin turbo car with three electric motors. Yeah. <laughs> so weird, right? It's that we were so talking weird. about that. Two of the electric motors, though, help drive the all wheel drive system. The, the all wheel drive. And that's a big change from the predecessor. It sure it is. All wheel drive. Yeah. Um, they didn't have a manual transmission, sadly. Nope, nope. Only paddle shifts. But with that said, it's 573 horsepower. It looks amazing. And it's not a whole lot heavier no. than the original. No. So those cars are about 100. You could. We found one this morning on Cargo Roos for 111,000. Yeah. It only had 13,000 miles on it. I mean, that's probably a better investment right now than the older one because the older ones are getting top value yeah and the newer version 2017 to 2023 20, hasn't really taken off well that's the nice thing about current model supercars is the second they come off the showroom floor they depreciate immensely right you know and if you can find a, a any supercar right that has was sold seven years ago right that's usually that's seven sometimes five depending on the car but that seven to ten year uh time period is when they depreciate the most yeah so that's kind of your window yeah and i think to your point this next generation of the acura nsx yeah. is kind of even though it's much earlier you know much earlier in that span right is kind of falling into that category yeah. it, it's it didn't capture the market uh like the earlier uh, uh, version, the first no, version. and they and but what's what may, was probably bad at the time is now a big positive. They didn't make very many. Uh, I looked and I had to add them up by year, and there's only three, four hundred made per year. Really? So it looks like there's only about twenty five hundred worldwide. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> worldwide of the new, and so that's a really small number. That is a really small. So, number. so that's a great point. I agree, and the car was. Two hundred and twenty, thirty thousand dollars new. You can get it for less than half less than right half, now. Yeah. I I bet they'll go down a little more in the next five years, and then they're going to go right back. Yeah, up. and that's in that window. Yeah, exactly. Right? And yeah. then you know you get twelve years, ten years down the line, and they're going to go back to theoretically the uh, uh, their original listing price. Yeah, which is kind of nice. You can no, make, you know you know you can invest for invest a hundred grand for a year or two yeah. and turn around and make a hundred grand off that investment. Yeah. As long as you maintain the car. For sure. <laughs> and yeah, I'm not yeah. saying don't drive the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying maintain the yeah, car. And maintain anytime it. you can garage your car and any supercar should be garaged. Agreed. I mean, you know, don't don't let your supercar sit out in a hailstorm in the middle of Texas. No. Yeah. Not a good idea. <laughs> Bad idea. Uh, but uh, all right, with that said, that wraps up uh, our little segment on the featured mark, which is the Acura. And when we come back from the break, we are going to talk about the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. This is the Speed Traveler Roadshow on KHTS Radio. All right. Well, welcome back to the Speed Traveler Road Show. I'm Chris Everson. That's Charlie Frank. And you're listening to us live on KHTS AM 1220 FM 98.1. Of course, we're available wherever you download your favorite podcast. Of course, check us out on social media at the Speed Traveler is our moniker. And uh, hit those like buttons. Follow us. Heckle us. Do whatever it is you want to do. Actually, I like comment. being heckled. Make yeah. a comment. So, yeah, yeah. comments. They can comment be pleasant. Too. They can be harsh. I don't mind. Uh, I take them equally with a, uh, equal aplomb. Yeah. And, and we have a lot of stuff up on the Speed Traveler YouTube channel. So that's a great place to go. Go to our Speed Tube. Uh, speed, <laughs> speed Tube. <laughs> I like that Speed Tube. I like that Speed Tube. <laughs> yeah. Go to our Speed Traveler YouTube page. And you can see all sorts of crazy videos that we've done with cars and reviewing cars and taking some road trips. And we have a, a new series up there. It's called Formula One Deep Dive. And we really get uh, into the nitty gritty of Formula One and we talk about the upcoming races and we review the past race. So check it out on YouTube. Yeah. And speaking of upcoming races in this segment, we're going to be talking about the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. And 
I got to tell you, I'm so excited yeah. for this event. I the, look forward to it every year. The race is coming up this weekend, April 19, 2021, in the beautiful city of Long Beach, California. And uh, what an amazing thing, uh, the race. Look what it's done for the city of Long Beach. Oh, my you know, God. It, a it, sailor town yeah. where, where the classy place was the Pussycat Theater. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and... Uh, what almost 50 years later, the race started in 1975, almost 50 years later, the town is really turned around. You know, there's all this great, all these great uh, condo complexes, high rises, there's great restaurants. And we're going to talk a little bit about one of those great restaurants in a minute here. But the, uh, the race really turned that town around, didn't it? It really did. And, and the, the organization has just done a fantastic job with, bringing in a variety of events you right. know, of events you know obviously the anchor tenant here is the indycar championship race right right it's it's the big race of the year as a matter of fact i mean uh you know andretti the name andretti's in the been in the news a lot because of their efforts to try to get in the formula one right. and really the race year that's kind of kept the long beach grand prix on the map right. was 1978 right yeah, Mario 78, Andretti. when Mario Andretti, Mario and Mario, I'm an American, Mario. Mario. Wait, wait, it was 77 he I, won. Uh, yeah, I it think, was 77. He, I think he came so, in second in 78, but he won the, won the race in, World Championship in 78. But he won the race in 77, 77 which right. was really important to the Long Beach Grand Prix. It sure was. Because it was an American driver yeah. winning the race yep. and in a Lotus. Yeah. Um, which everyone loved Colin Chapman. Right. So that was a very important race. I mean, granted, there was Formula One races before that date, and the, it right. started off with the F5000 race in 1975. Right. But that was a very pivotal event uh, uh, year for the Long Beach Grand Prix, and it's it set the precedent for what it is today. Yeah. And it's an incredible show. Yeah, and as you just said, it started with Formula 5000, which was a North American racing series, uh, in 1975, and then it became uh, Formula One. I think uh, we had Jim McKelly and the CEO on uh, a few weeks ago, and I believe he said Formula One went from 76 to 83. Correct. And then IndyCar came in as, as you said, as like the featured, the featured brand. Uh, and IndyCar has been there now since 1984. Yeah, which is exactly 40 years this week. Wow, unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, uh, but it's a great race, and and you you you. Uh, kind of touched on it and that is that there's all these other great things going on like uh, one of the favorite thing uh, my, my favorite thing of the weekend is the stadium super trucks with robbie gordon we should have had robbie gordon on. i know i know what were we thinking <laughs> yeah, i mean but, he's a good dude and uh, yeah. an incredible driver and his son funny. is is equally incredible behind the wheel of those super uh, stadium super trucks and i mean it's just crazy watching those get guys get launched off yeah. these steel ramps they bring out on a track and they're literally going higher than the fence line. They're it's going as high of the yeah. bridges. Yeah. And a couple of those jumps are set up from a driver's perspective. I mean, it just seems nuts to me. You know, you, you get launched off this jump when we start coming down off the, you know, on your descent. Right. All you can see is this bridge in front of you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, it's kind of nuts. And they and even after the race or after the practice sessions or everything, yeah. you know, all the drivers put on a great little stunt show as oh, they yeah, work they their do. way back yeah. uh, to the pits it's just such a cool yeah, aspect and, and of and the it's event funny. it's only about, about 10 or 15 lap race but uh the crowd just gets on their feet and they're 10 deep on the fence to watch right. this and there's some good places to watch it the front straightaway is a great spot but the only issue there is the crowd's so big right there yeah it's a little harder to see we like watching over on uh I guess it would be about turn six and between six and seven on yeah. Pine Street, right in front of the entrance to the convention center. Exactly. And that that's a great place. You can get really close to the fence and you could see the cars just take off there, the trucks. Take yeah. Off. And you can see that from the convention center, from the upper level right there. And, yeah. and the reason, another reason why that's such a great place to watch the trucks is they do come off a turn and they're all squirrely and they yeah. all are approaching a, a, a ramp right. or a jump. But it's also one of the widest spot, if not the widest spot on the yeah. track. So yeah. at the end of the race or at the end of the session, you can you can count on somebody doing donuts oh, or something yeah. silly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think we even have a great video on on our YouTube page or our Instagram page yeah. of, of Max and uh, Max Gordon, uh, Max and, Gordon, Gordon and Robbie yeah. Gordon doing yeah. uh, pirouettes together. So yeah. It's just such great precision driving. Yeah, really fun, fun event. And uh, also, uh, if, if drifting's your thing, 
uh, the uh, the drifting uh, show is on Friday and Saturday night. Right? Yeah, and it's at the evening time, and yep. it's 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 located on the the front straight. Right. Excuse me, the back straight. Yeah. Uh, between turn seven and. Yeah, uh, turn, eight, yeah, nine, ten, and eleven. Yeah, right? so yeah. they come, they start out near turn seven, they go down to turn eight, and they set up their drifts through that night, and then they do a really fun drift through that interesting yeah, nine, uh, ten, eleven, nine, 10, yep. 11 complex, and then yep. into the hairpin. Yeah, and uh, it's it's a great show, and it's what's cool is they do it at night, and so all the smoke and the sparks and the lighting that the right. cars have on there, yeah, and the fans are going crazy, and they got a DJ going. Right, I mean our buddy uh, uh, Matthew with Garage East yeah, has a few cars. Say, those yeah. guys are going to be there. So. I mean, another, and, and the list goes on. I yeah, mean, the drift sport, cars are great. Yeah, there's sports car racing. Imps has got a race going on. There's the historic Indy car race, which our buddy Dave Friedis is going to be in. Uh, and there's a lot going on. There's live GT, concerts. Live concerts. There's a, the GT2, 3, and 4 series. Yeah, and that's a really yeah. exciting event to watch because that's the biggest field of the weekend. Yeah, and those are cars that are similar. Like if you were to go buy a Lambo, it's basically the race car is really similar to what you could buy right on the street. Absolutely. A Ferrari. There's some Porsches, Porsches in there. Ferraris. Yeah. You said Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, yep. uh, Mercedes. I mean, some really technically advanced street yeah. cars, and, and, <laughs> but are fully caged. I mean, yeah. not street cars by any sense of the imagination. And you, you know what? We, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but since we've been to every race, what advice would you give someone that's never been to Long Beach? Like, where would they stand? Where do they get their ticket? Well, you know, let's what start. They... That's a great question, Charlie. And let's start with just getting in there. And I highly recommend, if you've never been to an event like this before, Go on Friday. You, Agree. You, you yeah. know, <laughs> go on Friday. I mean, there's a number of reasons to do that because the fan base isn't quite as large, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, access is much more open. Um, and ticket availability, as a matter of fact, there are free tickets available. Now, I believe it's still going on, but if you go to an Acura dealership right. and you you kind of have to test drive an Acura, or you can just say I'm here for the free tickets, you, know, right. you can be honest, and you'll get a free pass for Friday. It's a general admission pass, but that's the thing what I, that I love about this right. event. Accessibility with just a general admission ticket pretty much gets yeah. you everywhere. That's true. And uh, also the press, the local paper, the Long Beach Press-Telegram, uh, generally, I mean, they've done it for every year for about the past 20 years, uh, have a free Friday pass for fans. So you just got to find one of those newspapers and get in for free right. on Friday. And as far as places to watch, I mean, we, and we haven't even touched on this part, there is a huge expo pavilion. Right. And there's tons of interesting it's all, automotive products. It's all free products. as part of your entry. It's all free as part of your, like you said. Yep. Um, lots of automotive stuff, lots of food items, lots right. of you know, oddly mattresses and uh, <laughs> you know, everything's for sale, but so many people have interactive booths. Like yeah. there's a, there's a, a simulated drive, uh, a sim race simulator there where you can race against other people. Right. That's loads of fun. They have a kid's zone with bouncy uh, stuff and all the kind of things that, that, that a, a young, a young, ty young tyke might like. Yeah. It's um, family, very family very oriented, family very friendly. family friendly. The kids are going to go nuts over the stadium. Super trucks oh. jumping in the air. It lo yeah. looks like a bunch of hot wheels flying yeah. through the air. And, uh, I think from my my side, I would say you go for free on Friday, Saturday, you can get a general admission. I mean, of course they've got ticket packages still available, mm -hmm. Uh, for all three days, for some of the grandstands are sold out, but uh, there are still grandstand tickets available. They have some hospitality, although most of them are sold out, but I saw there was still a couple hospitality packages where you right. get lunch still open. Uh, so check it out. Yeah. You know, definitely check it out. Uh, so what I would say is if you buy a general admission ticket, I think the, the few places I like is we mentioned it between... I think it's turn six and seven or seven and eight on Pine Avenue. Six and seven. Yeah, yeah. I like that area. And then we also like the super speed tunnel. Yeah, that's <laughs> really cool. That's in reference to Disney's uh, monorail, Mon yeah. not monorail, uh, people mover, people mover. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where they have the super speed tunnel. But uh, there's a great place to watch on uh, just over the bridge. Just the over the bridge as you're getting to the convention center. Yeah. And it's like the first thing you see. Yeah. You so know? you can go over the bridge there so that you're on the water side of the circuit. Uh, so you're in the shoreline village area. Yeah. And uh, the cars come around, the Indy cars come around the corner. They're going about 190. Yeah. And it's just an unbelievable experience. It really, you know, I don't think there's really a bad place to watch. I think the yep. key takeaway here is just get a general admission ticket. If yeah. you if you're comfortable with walking and you know yeah. wear your comfortable shoes, right? Uh, you know, 
explore the whole area and find the area exactly. and the item that you like, exactly. you know, because there isn't a bad spot at the Long Beach, the Acura yeah. Grand Prix of Long I, Beach. I would add one more. I know uh, one year we were just walking around with the family and stuff and we, we ended up down in turn one. And uh, what that was a great spot a great because spot. at the start of the green flag and every subsequent restart, the cars come in there like a like a beehive. Yeah, <laughs> like a swarm, of, swarm bees. of bees. And uh it's really action packed. So that's, that's another good spot. And it's right there by the aquarium. So yeah. and, and the aquarium aquarium is open. Right. So yeah. you know, you can then go visit the aquarium if you like. Right. So, go see some ants. There's some so animals. much to do at the Long Beach Grand Prix that it's not gonna take just one year to experience it all. Yeah. You're gonna wanna go back. Right. All right. With that said, we're gonna take our last break. Uh this is the Speed Traveler Road. Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Speed Traveler Road Show here on KHTS AM 1220 FM 98.1. Of course, available wherever you download your favorite podcasts and, of course, on all the social media networks at the Speed Traveler. And Charlie, uh, I'm here. I'm Chris Everton. That's Charlie Frank. And in this segment, Charlie, we're going to kind of do a little F1 preview. But Honestly, I think we need to step back. We didn't quite finish everything we wanted to talk right. about with the Long Beach, the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. And it's kind of a big one. Yeah. It's kind of a big one. It is. So I'd say 80% of the year, we've been to every single one of these races. So it's uh, there. You know what? It isn't quite 50 because we missed a year in COVID. Right. Because I was trying to figure out the math and I'm like, how is this not the 50th anniversary? But we lost a year during COVID. We lost a year, and then they shift they shifted it the following year to September. September, yeah, which was actually so, kind of interesting. That was, but uh, for a lot of those races and race weekends, we've stayed on the Queen Mary, and it's a very Ooh, the haunted stay. Queen Mary, <laughs> and it's a really unique place to to stay, and and you know it's not. It's not the Ritz. <laughs> we'll just be honest. And I think the Queen Mary would be well, okay admitting that. But it was the Ritz when she first <laughs> sailed in 1914, 19- maybe. I'll yeah, check yeah, that. Yeah, double check that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But it's just such a unique place. I mean, where else can you stay on a hundred year old ship? You know, and have an room. adventure in its own right. Yeah, exactly. You know? and, and the best thing is, you know, if you do stay at the Queen Mary, there's a boat shuttle that goes across the harbor, right, the harbor right taxi. to the track. The harbor taxi goes right to the track. So it's super convenient. Yeah, you, you could park your well. car at the Queen Mary. You could check into the hotel. It's reasonably priced. Yeah. And you could take the, ta- the water taxi. Uh, right across to the uh, shoreline village and be right there at the track entrance. Yeah. You don't even have to touch your car. All I know. Weekend. Actually, the water taxi is going to uh, lands on a dock that's going to be very near where our friends uh, uh, Rich and Liz are staying. They're staying on a boat there. Oh, for this I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, the Queen Mary. It's a uh, it's a cool place. Like you, you got to get into the spirit of it. I mean, the showers are you original. Said spirit. <laughs> spirit. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, it, the the showers are original. The bathtubs that. The tile work. I personally think it's really cool. Yeah. And I love staying there. And and I'm not certain if it's a name we gave the suite, but there's a, there's a Winston. I think it is actually no, called the Winston, Winston, Winston Churchill, Churchill suite. suite. Yeah. And we stayed in it. And what's crazy is there's all these historical books in there. And, and I, maybe I shouldn't say this, but they're not like glued in. You can actually <laughs> read these books. And there's some books there that are... 80, 90 years old. It's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, I just, you know, what's funny is the, I, I was confusing the Titanic, which it was the anniversary of its sinking a few days ago. Yeah. Uh, the Queen Mary didn't come along until April 3rd of 1934. Okay. That, so it's about 85 years old. Yeah. But uh, it but it looks a lot like the Titanic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. in itself is a little <laughs> uh, spooky. And there's been years where the, the Queen Mary, you know, when you look at it from outside and from the front, it's kind of listing the one <laughs> side or the other. <laughs> yeah, it's so, true. <laughs> but now the city has it back and they're spending a lot of money to rejuvenate it, revitalize and it. we're staying in the recently refurbished room. So uh, excellent, be, <laughs> excellent. We'll give you a review next week on how exactly. those went. But it, it's a great But place. as far as other hotels, I mean, you're not going to see a lot of drivers at the Queen Mary. No. But the Hyatt's at the at the epicenter of the Long Beach Grand Prix. Right. Uh, it's literally attached, you know, above the convention center there. And yep. you're right in the middle of the track. You are. And, and they're not cheap. But no. if you can get and a it's suite a three day room, minimum. And it's a three-day minimum. You have to. Actually, I think they changed it to four days. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. They cha- uh, if I'm not mistaken. But you'll also see uh, a lot of the drivers, team owners, mechanics, and all, you know, a lot of the 
uh, the the big wigs all stay there. And, yeah. and we talk about this in Formula One races. We're talking about this in Las Vegas. It's a right. great place to kind of see um, a lot of the drivers and uh, team yeah. owners. And, stuff and then, like then also right on uh, Ocean Avenue, there's the Hilton, uh, which is a place where we always park. There's the Renaissance, which is right by our favorite restaurant, La Opera. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then there's the Sheraton. So, you know, some, some really good places there. Uh, and you know, since we mentioned La Opera, uh, that is, we're going to be coming to you live on Friday night and Saturday night. You can get us on Instagram live. We're going to be, uh, broadcasting live from La Opera restaurant, which is on first and pine. And if you're going to the Long Beach Grand Prix, or if you're going to go try it for the first time, Come by at 6.30 p.m. and uh, come into the bar area. We're going to be all set up and doing our podcast right there. Have a cocktail with us. Have a meal. I mean, the food's amazing. Terry, amazing. the, uh, the uh, owner there, yep. has just a fantastic group yep. of people. And he doesn't call them people. He calls them family. Yeah. And they all refer you know, refer to each other as family. I mean, some of the folks that at work there, some of that family have been there yeah. for over 25 years. It's, it's incredible. And the level of service is so much better than Diana's. Do not eat at Diana's. <laughs> Diana's. Diana's. I yeah. don't even want to call it the right Diana's. Do not eat there. Go to Leopra, <laughs> save a couple extra pennies, go to Lopra and have a fabulous butternut squash tortellini. Is always ravioli. Our fa- a ravioli <laughs> yeah. is always amongst our favorite. And Maybe it's it is a, tortellini. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's so good. It's so buttery. You're going to love it. A little bit of sage. But more importantly, it pairs so well right. with Vassar Vineyards oh, V12 yeah. wine. Vassar Vineyards V12, one of our favorite wines. Wines owned by, I think it's 96, 97 IndyCar champ, Jimmy Vassar. And his sister, Vicky Vassar, runs the winery. They're actually not, interestingly, they're not open to the public. One of the but few. <laughs> if you do call them, they will take groups in. I think there's, you have to spend a certain amount of money, which is only fair because you will have an experience that you can't have anywhere else in the world. It's not like going to the big wineries where there's buses coming and going and they're charging you, nickel and diming you for everything. Absolutely. If you go to uh, V12 Vassar Vineyards, uh, you can have an amazing experience where there's 10 or 12 people there. Yeah, and that's it. And their their tasting room is deli- it's it's a beautiful setting and the yeah. wine is delicious. Yeah. And what's really interesting and it's unique I think to the area is they have uh, 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 grapes growing on three different faces. Yeah. Faces. So <laughs> yeah. they get a great variety of south, north, west facing right. uh, growth um, on and, on old growth. Not you yeah. know, on and top so, of that. And so that's that's not in Long Beach, but they but we brought it up because yeah. B twelve uh, Vineyards One has the- great wine at La Opera. But it is if you're going to the NASCAR race in Sonoma, or you're going for a wine tasting weekend in Sonoma. Uh, reach out to uh, V12 Vineyards and uh, they'll they'll give you an amazing experience. Well, you know, that that was a, a really lovely extension of the uh, Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach deep dive right. when really we should be diving into <laughs> Now we're going to do a short dive, a short dive. <laughs> of Formula One Grand Prix of China coming up this weekend. Yeah, and and we do, you know, we should mention here that we do do a completely separate show. We just we did do. a live one at Moto Ren yep. on the uh, Speed Traveler deep dive, yep. Formula one deep dive and it's exclusively deep dive uh on formula one on formula one (laughs) it's exclusively deep dive (laughs) deep dive only on formula one i like that but that's a great show if you're really a gearhead you're really into f1 i mean people are really into f1 now because of f1 drive to survive yeah i mean that show uh, netflix Netflix, has just exploded the market and genius to them for doing that and they're continuing to do that yeah but you know but quickly on uh this weekend's f1 race uh, they haven't had a race in China for five years uh, because of COVID, I'm assuming. I don't and even some know other political yeah, and some other issues. Yeah. But China has some high speed stuff and they have some long straightaways. So what cars, uh, which cars do you see at the front this weekend? You know, it's interesting because uh, uh, the Chinese circuit, the, Ch- the Grand Prix of China circuit has some similar elements to the uh, Japanese Grand Prix, the, right. the famous S's, right. uh, turn three, four, five, and six right. at, at Suzuka. Right. There's a similar section. So the cars that performed well there are going to do well on that sector yeah. of the track. And, and in, in a straight line, I mean, obviously the, the Red Bull, the all-conquering Red Bull, uh, the Max Verstappen won the championship the last three seasons. Yep. Uh, that car, of course, is going to be the odds-on favorite because that car in a straight line is fast. It's very fast. But the Ferrari 
engine i think is good because the ferraris are fast in a straight line also they are and and they they're showing great drivability you know yeah. carlos signs uh, has been really putting that car in all the right places. Charles yep. Leclerc, I think, had one of the drives of the weekend uh, last week in yep. Japan. Um, so I really expect for, for the, the Ferraris to represent well yeah. in China. But yeah. that's not to say we shouldn't look at what the McLaren right. and what the Aston Martin can do. Right. You know? Yeah. No, I, I mean, agree. I think that the... Uh, I think that... The Mercedes is kind of going to be nowhere because they're just not fast in a straight line. And you even heard some of the chatter. I mean, it, with that said, Aston Martin's not too fast in a straight because you heard Lance Stroll complaining he about. He was complaining vehemently about so that. I'd Lance say, is not one to pull his punches on the radio. But, but, big asterisk here. Uh, Aston Martin's supposedly coming with some big upgrades for the right. Chinese Grand Prix. And even Alonso is kind of... They're, expressing watch out for what we can do yeah they, i mean they're gonna need it but in my mind it's uh in, as far as top to you know the top five i think it's of course red bull because they're fast and straight ferrari's much much improved uh and and mclaren is good yes. they did really well last year at silverstone which is a high speed long straightaway track and china's a little bit like that uh, i think uh aston martin probably next and mercedes probably for a long probably Hasn't been the fifth best team in 12 or 15 right. years. I would not be surprised to see Mercedes getting some competition from a couple of the other teams yeah. uh, a little bit deeper in the pack. Right. I mean, uh, Valtteri Botas has yeah. shown incredible skill in yeah. the, whatever that team's called now, <laughs> Stake F1. Stake F1, right, right. You know, um, and so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how far back Mercedes yeah. tumble. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I agree. So we're almost out of time. You have a pick for uh, I do, and I I I claim this pick uh, in in our actual F one uh, deep dive, right? And that's Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz from Ferrari. Yeah, I'm going to take Lando Norris from McLaren just for which probably going to be Max Verstappen, but let's see if Lando can do it. Uh, and Chris, that about wraps it up. We're going to come back and we'll have all sorts of stories next week about our Long Beach Grand Prix adventure. We hope you can join us at Leopa Restaurant at Long Beach Friday and Saturday night, April 20, 19 and 20. Uh, this is the Speed Traveler Roadshow. We'll see you next week.